who do you think will be the winners and losers in the Chinese company's foray into AI? Yeah, it's John Mandy. And this is called generative AI. And uh, for our companies across Alibaba, Tencent, and Baidu, they have been investing in that for quite a while. And uh, we think execution will be key, that uh, whether the early move advantage alongside accurate results and al alongside kind of working along, uh, making sure they're regulatory compliant, all of those will play a role into who would uh, be, end up be leading in, in this front. And we think uh, from investors' pr perspective, they are mainly focused and whether the search industry landscape may be, uh, may be challenged, whether there will be some disruption to the existing search industry and who could benefit from that. On the cost side, that, that would involve a lot more processing power, a lot of processing and capex in, involved, and therefore also chip availability and overall. And therefore, uh, we do think now is still the early time for our US team. We do think generative AI is a next driver of our industry innovation. And in China's case, we are still um, in the process of that and likely testing phase for a few players for the next few months before any official launches. So before this um, sort of game-changing moment with the uh, announcement of ChatGPT, there had already been some feeling, Ronald, that there was regulatory normalisation in China when it came not just to the internet but also tech in general. Will that change now, though? Because the debate is, is very much front and centre as to how AI should be regulated. So across regulations, we published our outlook piece around a month ago, talking about the seven key themes, but amongst which regulation normalization is one of the themes that we expect, particularly domestically, that we've gone through the DD, we've gone through the ant uh, issues over the past two, two, three years. And with those normalizing, with the fines behind us, with antitrust investigations behind us, we do expect a more normalization as the government talks about platform economies and how this will be playing a key role in driving consumption. And therefore, the other themes that we see this year is that uh, mobile time spent peaking, consumption recovering, and a unique combination of reopening and consumption means we, are, we lifted advertising as our most preferred subsector for the, for the, for the sector. Um, and uh, within that, we've lowered e-commerce slightly. They typically are not reopening beneficiaries and prefer ads over kind of e-commerce, but at the same time, payment, cloud, all of those will gradually improve as well. Uh, back to your questions on regulation. So what, what investor focus has been not only just domestic, we think norm more normalization, but we can kind of keep keeping an eye on how the US um, regulatory uh, kind of talks on China tech, on chips, on uh, TikTok, a lot of those. So meanwhile, we, we do expect on the domestic side, uh, regulations will normalize and uh, will be supportive of platform economies and like uh, what we've seen in the past two years of new laws. And now it's more concluding of those and this would set the new norm um, for regulations. Hi, I'm Emily Tan and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.